Gottes. Good evening and welcome to The Right Side, the show where we talk about today's news, views, trends and opinions from an admittedly conservative perspective. I'm your host, Chris Pareja, and this evening we're joined by Sam Paredes from Gun Owners of California. He's going to be talking to us a little bit about Gun Owners of California and some of the projects they work on. But without further ado, Sam. Chris, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. It's, it's kind of a long walk. You came from east of Sacramento. I walk fast. Yeah. Well, it's a foreign country up in Sacramento anyway, because the world seems to turn a little differently up there. Yes, it, uh, you know, we, I often comment that it's kind of like working inside the, the razor wire when you're in Sacramento. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the life is a little bit different. The people that populate, especially that go building with the Golden Dome, uh -huh. Uh, are a different lot of people. They are, and they think that rules don't apply to them, but they have no problem assigning all sorts of rules and laws to us, which is the whole reason we want to talk to you. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure. You know, as, as recently, we all know that uh, uh, some state senators feel that uh, they can promote gun control policies, and on, the, on their off hours, they can be international gun dealers. Well, it helps to keep the prices up if it's harder to get them. <laughs> <laughs> it's the supply and demand thing. Yeah. If it seems more dangerous, people will pay more for it. Well, the unfortunate thing is that it is more difficult for law-abiding citizens, but for the criminal element, they seem to be able to get anything they want, anytime they want. Well, and what's interesting is that it's not just Sacramento that seems to be involved in this. We're seeing very local ramifications and potential indictments coming down in the next uh, short while, even in the San Francisco mayoral and supervisoral office is what I was seeing in the news. Well, there, that the investigation is kind of the gift that keeps on giving uh, they, they've um, I we may have seen only the tip of the iceberg with uh, the characters that have been indicted so far but um, you know it's that old adage absolute power corrupts absolutely when when you have politicians that have been in in office for so long uh, the temptation sometimes becomes so great and they they do believe that they are above the law and they can they can do anything with impunity. Well, that's not the case. We live in a constitutional republic, mm -hmm. uh, federally, and even here in the state. Uh, people don't like it. Tough toast. That's what we have. And uh, given as such, we the people are the ones to give the authority to the legislature, and we have to hold their feet to the fire. And that's what we do at Gun Owners of California with regards to the Second Amendment here in the state, Gun Owners of America. In Washington, D.C., we do the same thing on a na uh, nationwide basis, uh, making sure that the legislators, as they propose laws that affect our Second Amendment rights, if they are an infringement on that right, they feel our heat, our, 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 so to speak. <laughs> not uh, patent, uh, reference to packing heat, no, but... No, no, no. <laughs> You're not as, pistol whipping as, politicians No, no, right no, now. no. We are just raising the, 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 the fire in the kitchen, you know, and if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen sort of a deal. But uh, we, we let them know, or, or our membership uh, nationwide uh, lets them know that they are treading on, on, on an infringement of their rights. And if they're doing a good thing by trying to restore some of the rights that have been taken away by government over the years and decades, um, we, we do what we can to help them and encourage them. Um, and and it, we do the same thing here in California. California is a little bit different. It, it's extremely different. And uh, so the question is, do people like Leland Yee, when they're arming the bad guys, do they do background checks? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was awfully careful not to divulge the, the, the identity and background of, of one of the first individuals that he uh, was trying to connect with the, with the gun purchasers. Uh, that individual was very careful about his background check and was not going to play well. That's when he went to his, uh, apparently to his second team, and, uh, and it involved the, the rebels in, in uh, the Philippines who were being armed by the Philippine military, evidently, and could provide any number or type of weapons that uh, anybody wanted to purchase throughout the world. And that's who he was connecting with what we now know were FBI agents here in the state of California. Well, it's good that law enforcement works. <laughs> <laughs> we do pray for our law enforcement officers and help hope that they will do everything they can to catch the bad guys. Absolutely. So this is all fun stuff and it's great to see it coming, but how did you originally get involved with gun owners? Well, I, um, 
it was a um, an act of God, actually. Uh, I grew up in East Los Angeles, um, went to school in Southern California, I graduated Pepperdine. I got a degree in political science, and I didn't want to go into law school, uh, which meant that I was qualified for not a whole lot. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I got involved uh, in, in 1980 in a, in a legislative campaign as a campaign manager and uh, uh, got the bug. And by the end of the year, I moved to Sacramento, went to work for Gun Owners of California as a field representative. And I've been with them either as a direct employee, a member of the board of directors, um, volunteer for 34 years. Okay. So it's been a long time. And I've been the executive director since uh, 1998, and uh, it's a very rewarding job, although uh, on occasion frustrating. Uh, I would test. expect to be more than just that on occasion. You'd be frustrated, especially being in Sacramento, in California, yeah. trying to fight the fight. You're, you're, you're uh, we don't let we don't let frustration slow us down on what we do. Uh, it, when we get frustrated, it's it. You sit down for a second, you shake your head, and and you dust it off because. Our constitutional rights are that important. We have to uh, charge ahead. Uh, we cannot be, uh, you know, I'll, I'll allow ourselves to be downtrodden. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to be positive. And we know that ultimately our rights will be restored. Our constitution is that resilient. The Bill of Rights are that important. And ultimately, uh, as we continue to fight in the legislature, in the courts, uh, and in the elections, uh, we believe that vindication will, will, will be the, the end prize and that the Second Amendment will be restored, that law-abiding citizens uh, and, and uh, residents of the United States will be able to have access to whatever firearms they want for whatever legal purpose they want. Our founding fathers uh, did not have the qualifications <laughs> that, that, that are trying to be put forth by those who, who purport uh, gun control. Only for hunting purposes? Or? No, not quite. <laughs> not quite. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, to fight against tyranny, uh, even tyranny from from within, uh, was uh, first and foremost in in their minds. And remember that gun control was the first act of revolution. Uh, Lexington and Concord. The British tried to take the gunpowder and the flints. Uh, of the colonialists, and they said, "No way, no gun control in this country." And they fought back and. We know the rest of the story. Right, right. Well, and, and many people don't necessarily focus on that part of the story at all or the heritage that's involved with gun ownership. And the reason that, you know, some people may today say we're paranoid that we want to hold our guns for that. But that was symptomatic of a, what was going to come. It's happened in Germany. It's happened in plenty of other places. The first thing to go are the guns. And then the crackdown begins. Uh, anybody uh, who has at least one finger can go on a computer and Google search or any search engine they want to find out the countries that have been um, where there have been atrocities committed by the government and the list is monumental and the number of people that have lost their lives uh, a number in the millions over the recent past decades millions and uh, you will find in virtually every case, in every case, gun control is right at the head of that, of that uh, uh, direction that those governments went to. Germany, Soviet Union, you, you name it, Asia, um, Africa, uh, South America, gun control, you take, care the, uh, take away the guns from the people that can fight back, and then you can do whatever you want to them. I mean, we have history uh, gives us some examples like uh, of, of somewhat wise people like Admiral Yamamoto, um, who, who uh, when was encouraged by his Japanese uh, uh, generals and, and admirals to invade the west coast of the United States, he wisely said that, uh, uh, and I'm going to put it in the vernacular, nah, we're not going to do that because behind every blade of grass there's going to be an American with his own gun killing us. Right. And, uh, and, and that is the heritage of, the, of our country. We have over 400 million guns in private possession in the United States. Right. 400 million. Here in California, somewhere between 30 and 40 million guns are owned by law-abiding citizens. The percentage of people that misuse firearms, commit crimes, is so small. The, 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 the percentage of accidents that we have in comparison to the total number of guns that exist is so small that kind of logically leads you to the conclusion that Americans are 
responsible, they are respectful, uh, and they are careful about exercising their rights. Well, and also the statistics stay low if a perpetrator uh, of a gun violence crime is fatally stopped uh, <laughs> at the scene of the crime, he doesn't tend to, or she doesn't, we'll be fair, okay. uh, tend to uh, commit the crime again when they're dead. The best thing to stop You can bad, vote again, that's you, true. but you cannot. No, that's true. Yeah, that's but, true. But you Even here in California. Again. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, they, they often say that uh, the, the, the best uh, weapon against a, a, a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Yeah. We see that over and over and over again when... Um, you know, when you need a police officer uh, in, in minutes, uh, often you only have seconds right. uh, to, to respond. And, um, and frankly, police officers are too, hairy to ca too heavy to carry around. So uh, many, many Californians have chosen to take on the responsibility of defending themselves, uh, being their first line of defense against criminals or um, terrorists or anybody who might uh, infringe on their um, safety the mm -hmm. safety of their loved ones and family and friends and co-workers. Right. So you said that y you are attacking this uh, from the three levels. Yes. You said from uh, the uh, the legislatures, you've said that you're attacking it on the uh, election level and... In the courts. And in the courts. Yeah. And so talk to us a little bit about how you're going about sure. that. Sure. Uh, let's start with the elections. The elections are probably the single most important area for us to be active in. Um, electing people, first identifying, recruiting of, uh, uh, as candidates, people who respect the Constitution of the United States and, and the Constitution of California and uh, who are willing to take a pause from their life and to do public service uh, in, in order to fight to protect those rights is an important thing. Um, and when we figure that if we can elect good people and send them to Sacramento, for a period of time, or to Washington D.C., that uh, they're and they are our friends. We don't have to change their minds. Right. Changing the mind of a politician who got there by his own means is uh, a very difficult task to accomplish. You know, uh, you have to change their mind n either with your good looks and charm, or with. Um, uh, the, the heat that we talked about earlier, right. the, the, the fear that they will lose their seat, their power, if uh, they continue to go down the vein they're going. And that's what we do in, in gun owners. We, um, we try to keep you know, the, the heat uh, on, on, the, on the people that are there, those that we've elected. We, in the past, since our existence, we've helped elect some people, and we've helped bring some of them home when they changed their minds on, on the issue of guns. Right. And, uh, and, and, and had them replaced by, by fresh blood, so to speak. In Congress, the same thing. Um, there are, um, we have a more advantageous situation in many states in the Union where we work very diligently to identify those U.S. senators and congressmen, uh, uh, congressional candidates, who will defend our, our constitutional rights and who we are sure We'll, we'll do everything they can to defend our Second Amendment rights. And those are the people that we help to elect. So elections are very, very, very important. Even here in California, when people say, we're so behind the eight ball, how are you going to do it? You know, two-thirds majority. Well, we don't have two-thirds majority anymore. They only had it for about that long. And then uh, three of them, two of them were convicted of crimes, and one of them is, is uh, being investigated uh, and, and has a court date. Um, and, and there may be more to come. So uh, Couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of folks. <laughs> They they happen to be um, yeah uh, it's it's hard to comment with that you right. know but uh, so elections are very important uh -huh. uh, if we send our friends there we don't have to worry about them we can concentrate on all the rest right uh, the courts um, well no no let's start with the legislature why do we lobby in the legislature when we know that the elected majority we have in Sacramento and the majority that we have in the United States Senate right now are very unfriendly to the Second Amendment. Why do, we, why do we lobby? Why do we go share the truth? Why do we go and testify before committees presenting to them information that they have required by law to be collected to evaluate the effectiveness of gun control and we share, share it with them and say, You're, the information that you collected shows that gun control is ineffective. Uh, President Obama uh, required the Center for Disease Control to do a study on gun control. You never heard about the study once he asked for it. Well, it was published several months ago and it found that gun control has no impact on crime. 
in, in or this, a negative impact in some circumstances. In some circumstances, that's correct. So. Um, when we go before the legislature, we understand that oftentimes the, the members of the, uh, of the legislature, the assemblymen and the senators, are not our audience. Our audience are the people that are watching the proceedings, uh, the exactly media, right. uh, who, who may take a, a, a little bit of our testimony and publish it and, and let people know what the truth really is. Um, and we will never find ourselves in a situation where we go to a court which is the next area that we concentrate on. And, uh, and we go before a judge to fight an unconstitutional law. And the judge looks at us and says, you know, we have a, a government with uh, three parts, the executive, the judicial, and the legislative. You chose to ignore part of that by not participating in the legislative process. Even though you were behind the eight ball, you chose to ignore that. What, why do you come to the courts for, for a remedy now? We're never going to be uh, caught in that situation. We're going to fight uh, no matter how bad the odds are in the legislature. We will tell the truth, and that truth that we give in the legislature often is a basis for things that we go into the courts with. And finally, in the courts, um, since the uh, several years ago, the ruling on Heller versus uh, Washington, D.C., this was the first time the United States Supreme Court ruled that the Second Amendment was an individual right and that a government could not prevent people from having access to guns in their own home that are ready to go. The government of Washington, D.C. said if you had a gun, it had to be disassembled and locked up. If, you ha if we had given you a permit to have a gun, the court said you cannot do that. That the, the, the home is, is a, a person's sanctuary and they have the right under the Second Amendment to protect that home with ready access to guns. You, you can force people to buy trigger locks and gun safes, but the government can't force you to use them. That's okay. interesting stuff. Yeah. And so well, what about outside the home? Talk to us about the trends that are going in that direction. Well, Justice Scalia in that, in that court case said that uh, in, we are talking about the right to keep arms in this case, in Heller versus uh, Washington, D.C., uh, and subsequently McDonald versus Chicago, the, the, the Supreme Court took that question back and said, this issue is so important that it doesn't apply only in federal enclaves like Washington, D.C., or military communities or bases or anything like that, but it applies across the nation, and that state and local governments could not infringe on that right. But Justice Scalia, uh, said, we know that we're going to have to have another case come back for us to talk about bearing arms because bearing means guns outside of the home. And that's where we are right now. Right. And the Constitution specifically says keep and bear arms. You are a good student of the Constitution. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you were one of the, the you know, Three out of ten people who can who can quote any part of the Constitution in, in public. Well, it's I mean it's interesting, but so I'm assuming that there we're we're starting to already see trickles of them pushing back on states and and now as we were mentioning even before the show about cities like Sunnyvale mm -hmm. or Oakland trying to create their own gun laws and mm -hmm. trying to be the the strictest gun laws in the state which is already known for its strict gun laws. Yeah, we, we are the most restricted state in the, in the, in the country, according to all of the anti-gun uh, groups who rate those kinds of things. California is their, is their shining star. Uh, San Francisco passed a, a, an ordinance that would um, prevent people from having the best self-defense ammunition. You had to use the, the least effective ammunition is the only legal ammunition that you can have, and you had to keep guns locked up. Uh, Sunnyvale passed a law that said that even though it, it is legal for you to possess grandfathered high-capacity magazines, it is not legal in this state. So they violated both the state laws and the federal laws by, um, uh, they, they violated the preemption law that was sponsored by my boss, Senator H.L. Richardson, who served in the state legislature for 22 years and was the sponsor of that law when, when he served uh, uh, several decades ago. Um, and, and, of course, a violation of the, of the Second Amendment in, in, in these laws. But we are fighting back. We have the San Diego, uh, Peruta versus San Diego decision where uh, the sheriff down there would not issue concealed weapons permits. And a lot of the sheriffs won't. A lot of the sheriffs won't. And the federal court said that the only thing that you can require somebody to 
to tell you as a reason for wanting a concealed weapons permit is for personal defense, self-protection. There is no other constitutional reason that anybody has to give. And given our laws, the way they're written in, in California, that means that they meet the qualification for, require, for wanting a, a permit and the sheriff has to issue it. So um, that's causing a lot of angst. There are a couple of sheriffs that, have, that are seeing the writing on the wall and are at least now allowing people to apply for permits, but they're all kind of uh, tap dancing and tippy-toeing to see what happens when that, that decision is, is ultimately finalized. But we're very close to having it finalized here in the state of California. We're waiting for the Ninth Circuit Court to decide whether the Attorney General has an ability to request that the ruling that the Ninth came down with uh, can be reheard by an 11-judge panel instead of just a three-judge panel. Right. And, and that's where we are right now. But if that happens, that means Hawaii, Washington, Oregon, Guam, Nevada, Arizona, all of the states of the, of the 11th Circuit and the 9th Circuit Court, that's the law of the land. Right. And so on one level, people like to hold California up as the shining star, but they also understand the importance of California having to go this direction because if it does then the rest of it crumbles for them yeah oh yeah it's it's not even the, the you know the thumb in the dike it, it's like the the whole middle section of the dam is going to go and and there are a lot of people that are very fearful of that uh but we are confident that that common sense logic and the constitution are very clear we don't think that you need um, rational basis or intermediate scrutiny or strict scrutiny to define the Second Amendment. We believe that the Second Amendment has its own definition for scrutiny. It is, shall not be infringed. Right. And that is uh, different than all of the other uh, levels of interpretation that exist in the ju judicial halls. Okay, and so we've just got a couple minutes left, but just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. are there any of the laws that you do support, such as things like background checks or mental illness or other reasons that people might be... Background checks, um, here's, here's the issue that you, that you tread when you go there. If you have a constitutional right why do you have to do something ahead of time in order to exercise that right? Right. And in order to get a background check before you exercise a constitutional right, that's kind of backwards. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we believe that uh, law-abiding, free Americans should have the right to get, purchase, acquire whatever guns they want. If they misuse them, they get the book thrown at, at them. Um, there are cases where, where people who, who are, by everybody's definition, uh, mentally incapable of caring for themselves, a danger to themselves or others. We can agree in those areas. Right. That, uh, that there should be some controls there. Okay. Well, just we're very limited on the remaining amount of time, but tell us how people can learn more about you and the things that gun owners of California and America are doing to protect their Second Amendment? The, the easiest thing is to go to our, our websites, uh, gunowners.org, www.gunowners.org is Gun Owners of America. We just got a, a, a big victory in, back in, in D.C. where uh, the Obama administration was trying to make it difficult for um, gun dealers to use their credit cards and they were trying to cut them off and all. We got a great victory there. That's going to be overturned. For Gun Owners of California, uh, www.gunownersca.com. You can go to our websites. We've got legislative information. We've got the latest updates in the courts and we've got uh, candidates that are rated as to where they stand on the Second Amendment and, and opportunities for people to participate to defend their Second Amendment rights. Well, Sam, thanks for coming and sharing with us this evening and giving us a little bit of the historical perspective that many of us might not have known. And uh, we'll be keeping an eye on you. Chris, it's a pleasure and um, it's an honor to be fighting for the Second Amendment. Well, thank you for doing it. And if you hold on for just a moment, we'll be right back after a word from our underwriters, the Conservative Forum. The Conservative Forum of Silicon Valley began with 20 conservatives meeting at a restaurant in November of 2003. Our mission is to promote the principles of American liberty through education. By 2012, we had grown to over 600 paid members. 
Our monthly meetings feature well-known and prestigious conservative speakers addressing issues that are critical to our country's very survival. This includes speakers like Victor Davis Hanson, Andrew Breitbart, David Horowitz, and many others. In addition to our monthly meetings, we sponsor a conservative local cable access TV show, The Right Side, covering today's topics. Our Constitution Discussion Group not only teaches the Constitution, but started our annual essay contest that awards two $1,000 scholarships to local high school seniors. We are a virtual clearinghouse for grassroots organizations by providing them with table space at no charge in our exhibit area. There are typically a dozen groups represented. If you are like-minded, join us at our next meeting and become motivated and empowered. Liberty made in America. And welcome back to The Right Side. That was a word from our underwriters, the Conservative Forum. And while we appreciate tremendously their ability to keep this show going, uh, what they're best known for, actually, is the speaker series. And the reason we were able to have Sam Paredes with us this evening is he'll be speaking at the Conservative Forum this evening at 7 o'clock. That's when the, the show starts. You can get in a little bit earlier. But it takes place at 432 Stirling Road at the IFES Portuguese Hall right here in Mountain View, about three minutes from the studio. Now, in addition to Sam, upcoming speakers include on September 2nd, Mark Mix, president of National Right to Work. And in October, on the 7th, Pam Geller, blogger and commentator on Islam. That is a special event. And May 12th, I know, is one that a lot of people will be looking forward to where Ellen West will be joining us at the forum. You can find out more at theconservativeforum.com. And in closing, I just wanted to point out that you definitely have to keep an eye out for all of the gun legislation that's happening around the country, at the state level, at the local level. There are many organizations working to fight for your rights to keep and bear arms in the country and to keep your family safe. So please do keep an eye on them. Again, go to gunowners.org. Uh, for the national uh, version of Gun Owners of America, and then gunownersca.com for things happening at the California level. And if you do get a chance, please join Sam this evening or connect with him uh, via those websites and keep an eye on what's going on uh, for your safety and that of your family. Thanks again for joining us this evening on The Right Side. I've been your host, Chris Pareja, and we'll look forward to seeing you again in person or on the show sometime soon. Thanks again.